What's going on everybody? Core Conversations for a Thursday. It's a Freestyle Thursday and I have a question for you. But first, dad goals as always. And I can do some housekeeping stuff and then we'll get this going. So. Is that Lindsay? Hi. Carissa. Looking forward to our chat tomorrow, round two. Um, two and a half, I guess. So first, the Core Conversations podcast uh, is known is the Lindsay, I'd love to hear what you're up to. What's going on? Where are you living now too? Our guest. Our episode drop, sorry. So like, subscribe, and share. Bam. Pin that. Sack teaching a lot. Yes, true. Uh, Lindsay, if uh, this is on Freestyle Thursdays, so if you'd like to join us, I'd love for you to come on screen and just just talk about what you're up to. Uh, and we get to catch up with you. Um, it's been way too long. Uh, jump on. Actually, it's even to have you as a guest would be amazing too. Uh, folks, Lindsay is uh, someone who I met when I came went to Sacramento for a photo shoot for Balance Body back in the day where I met Misty and James Crater and uh, uh, Gerald and some others. So um, yeah, long time, long time now. That's like, what, five years ago, six years ago now? Seems like it's it's been a while, maybe more than that. So that's what's up. So yeah, so as more people come into the screen, I'll just present some of the things that I was thinking about and, uh, and we'll get it going. So yes, yeah, so Lindsay, we'll definitely get you in uh, and, and get you on at some point. Very cool. It's so funny, uh, Chris, that you're here because like we want to. I want to talk about some of the things that we touched on uh, last week in today's conversation, and I'll tell you what in a second. Um, but if you have, and even if you're watching this on a replay later, if you have any online classes, workshops. Uh, conferences, things that are coming up, please put it in the chat or in the comment section below so we can keep track of those things and cheer you on and do all of those things so that we can all get better. So that's that's definitely part of why we do this. And yeah, we'll just give it a second here.
hope everyone's doing well. So yesterday we had a fun time. Uh, Misty Lynn Cotton was my co-host as always. Excuse me. And um, we, um, our guests didn't show up, which I knew was gonna happen. So we kind of just chatted up, had a fun conversation, got a funny sound bite of Misty losing it on her pink chicken in her backyard uh, squirrel. So it, it's funny, and it was actually. It was a nice moment once again. We're talking about giving people flowers this week. It seems like that has been one of those unintentional trends that's come up where we're just talking about the things that people do, not waiting till things go wrong, till they're gone to celebrate them, but just celebrating people just, just, as I said, giving them flowers for just being awesome, for just having uh, that impact on our world and, and things that we do. So yeah, so that's what happened. I had uh, a gentleman came out, did that to me. I did it to Misty before. She did that to me yesterday. And she added to it. And she added not just like giving them flowers, giving them like big praise for the big things they do. But she was also saying to just give them that nod. Just that simple acknowledgement. I see you, I hear you, I value you. So I'm gonna place that, I'm probably gonna put it up on LinkedIn actually, that soundbite where she talked about that. But you know, in these times that we're in, we're hearing of all these these massacres that are happening in the US and there's other things that are happening in the world too, but it's so glaring, um, everything that's happening there. We lose sight of ourselves, we lose track of ourselves. And I don't know about you, but I've always feel so, um, I'll say discouraged, but not very hopeful that I can affect change because it's not my country. I'm not a legislator. I'm not making decisions, all those different things. But then you still carry the burden of it even though you can't make any change there. I always come back to taking care of myself. Put that oxygen mask on first. Do the thing that makes you come alive so that you can be there and be your best version of yourself for the people that you're around. Encourage them, lift them up, and then that way we can at least level the people around us and impact our sphere of influence while um, doing our thing instead of getting so bogged down with the, the noise that's happening in the world. So uh, it's not discrediting all these that are happening, but it's just like turning into yourself to take care of those around you. And that seems to be my MO during these times. So when Misty was talking about that, giving that nod, seeing and affirming people, that makes total sense to me. And I hope that even as people are going through you know, their own struggles and their own you know, day to day, the pulls and the demands of their life, their business, their work, their family, can you still find time for yourself? Can you still make that time for yourself in the midst of it? Because we have enough issues of our own before even turning a screen on to see what's happening in the rest of the world. So that conversation yesterday was key in that and taking care of ourselves giving that nod, giving those words of affirmation, build up the people that are around you, like all that stuff is so key. Which brings me to the topic at hand. And um, before I even do that, I just wanna say what's up to a few people here in the chat. So uh, Debbie, uh, Greg, what's going on? Thank you for jumping in today. The question I have in the chat is something that came out of a conversation I had with Carissa last week. So we were at Pilates house. My guest, I was yawning so much, man. Uh, my guest that I had last week, hi Olivia. Um, we were talking about this and it is one of those things where, phone froze, okay, is it unfrozen now? Are we good? Looks like my, my signal is pretty slow. 
before I, I start a whole diatribe, give me a thumbs up if uh, if, you, if I'm good. So here's the deal. So we're talking, I just say, well, taking care of yourself and the things that you bring, all that warm stuff. So now what the question I have that I have, the question I have for you is, what is the ethos of your studio or your space when you walk into it, that which you carry? And it's a Freestyle Thursday. I'd love for you to join me on the screen. If you want to just share instead of typing, you can type in the, in the box, comment box below. You can just, you can just jump on screen with me. But what is the ethos? What is that sense? What do you want people to feel? What do you want people to experience when they walk into your space? If you're a contractor and it's your class time, you run the house, what do you want people to feel when they step into that space? If you go into someone's house, you're carrying that, that spirit, that characteristic in there. And I'll give you an example while you are typing or just hitting that request to join thing. When uh, Carissa was on and we were talking about that, she was sharing how there's a vision that she had for her original space that wasn't really aligned with what she was doing. You kind of get caught up in trying to make it a cool space or to help the people that are in front of you and all these things and you kind of lose yourself and then you come back to a place of doing it the way you want to do it with the people you want to do it with in a way that makes sense for them and for you and there's alignment there and then you make it a hard workout, you make it an encouraging workout, you make it an educational workout, you make it a motivational workout, you make it a, a safe workout in, the, in terms of emotional safety. You do the things that make it, as I say, you put your signature on the work. What is that signature for you in your space? When I think about that for my space, I look at the, the example of the people who came in this morning. I had uh, a really high level athlete who came in injured. I have uh, an older gentleman, an older athlete who came in tired. And then I had a younger professional guy who came in busy. Can we finish early? I want to get a few things because I need to get on to the next thing. For all these people who normally would come in super strong, ready to go, super motivated, uh, semi-motivated, but definitely strong and ready to go, and the third person who is on track and with his goals, they usually come in locked and loaded, ready to go, and all three of them were just off today. In that though, they still came in, and the ethos of the space is, I want them to walk away glad that they actually showed up. So that next time when they feel like, I just feel off, I'm not gonna show up, they come because the last time they felt like that, they actually got a good workout. I want them to feel better when they leave. So even if they're feeling horrible and they come up feeling bad, <laughs> that's still a step up. Um, or they feel bad and they feel better. If they feel better, now they feel awesome. Whatever it is, if there's a step up, if there's some improvement, I want them to walk away feeling better. I want them to feel hopeful about their journey. So even on a day when like my first person comes in who usually has a lot of good things going, good energy and ready to just kill her workout, came in with knee pain and walked out like, okay, we're still on track. Even though today wasn't like a fantastic workout where we saw huge gains and huge improvement, we're still on our journey. So I'm still hopeful in our journey. And lastly, them to feel like they've accomplished something. Even if it's like, you may not made like the 10 foot bound, you might have shuffled your feet three inches. You actually have still accomplished something. So those are kind of parts of the ethos of this space. So wherever you are in your stage of life, whether you're a high level performer or you're injured and just trying to make some small progress, I want everyone to walk in feeling one way and walk out feeling one way. That's the ethos of this space. Someone may say, I want to come in and I want people to just feel like they, this is their spot where they just feel like this is a time when they can take care of themselves. I want them to feel like this is their me time. In the busy world, this is the spot where they can just find themselves. So just give me some examples of when you start to align the vision in your head with the space and give it an expression, what that looks like. So for you, what is the ethos of your space? Of the space when you walk into it? I'd love to hear your answers to that.
You can also, if you have a few minutes and wanna just jump on the screen, just press the request to join and uh, save yourself some typing by just joining me on the screen. What's going on, Stephen? So Lindsay Ross question, uh, statement says, I would like to say that mine is, let's get weird. Let's have fun. My space is a place to learn about your body and what you, you and your body can do together. Comfort and warmth. I love that. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm going to hang out on this for a moment. I'm going to read it one more time. I'm going to hang out on this. And Lindsay, I'd love to have you on to just talk about this. So let's make sure that happens one day. Um, I would, okay, so this is Lindsay's thing. I would, I would say that mine is let's get weird. Let's have fun. My space is a place to learn about your body and what you and your body can do together. Comfort and warmth. I love that line, what you and your body can do together. What's the you part and what's the your body part? Your body part. What are those in your mind? Just like your mindset versus your physical body or just that connection, that mind-body connection? I'm assuming that's it, but like, say more about that, please. BPA is saying community, a home feeling that everyone is accepted and that we progress each class at a time. Nice. How do you define community? So I like that home feeling. Everyone is accepted. But what does that practically look like? How do we make everyone feel accepted? And the reason why I say that is because it's like the conversation around welcomed versus belonging. I could say everyone's accepted, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they feel warm and like it's their home. I could say you're welcome in this space and I could follow you around and clean up after you and make you feel awkward even though you're allowed to be in the space. Or you could feel like you belong, where you could walk into my house, grab a drink from the fridge, sit down, put your feet up on the table, and there's a real sense of belonging in the home which is different than saying you have been granted access. So I like to get even deeper with those words with the level of intentionality so people feel it and that they can say, hey, you gotta come to this place because I really feel like I belong here. I'm inviting you to my space, which is actually his space sort of thing, right? Lindsay Ross is saying, I work with a lot of folks who really are who are really disconnected from their physical form. Queer folks, folks with a lot of trauma around their physical form. And sometimes I'm the first place these people ever really had to think about their body and what it does for them. Ah, yes. It's kind of a different conversation, Lindsay, but I, it's sort of the way that I look at it, even from the days I was in personal training. I, instead of saying, I want you to look like this and get like big arms or big uh, abs and strong abs and all these different things, it's like, what can your body do? Let's celebrate what your body can do. Let's maximize your body's potential. Let's actualize it. Let's get you moving optimally. Let's get you feeling optimal in terms of your health, which is a different conversation that you have in your doctor's office sometimes when they're like, Okay, well, your testosterone levels need to be between a 25 and a 45, and you're a 26, so you're fine. You're not fine. You're not dying, but you're not fine. How do we get you to the optimal place? So when, Lindsay, when you're talking about getting that connection with your body and recognizing what it can do for you, it's a celebration at that point. Let's not just discover what you can do, but let's revel in that. Let's have fun in that. Let's, let's explore more of this. Right? So that's it. So Lindsay is saying, but do you feel fine? I guess so. If someone has been living a sedentary lifestyle, they go into a doctor, the doctor says, okay, you're, you're good. They might believe that because they've never experienced that abundant life. They've never had a session with you, Lindsay, to realize what their body's actually capable of. Sometimes they think that the pain that they have is the pain that they've, they're supposed to have. Sometimes they recognize that the trauma in their head that's being expressed in their body is just them. They don't even realize that other people don't have those same impingements or, or lack of mobility or pain when they do certain things. They think that that's, they've normalized their mediocre experience. Take a sip of water and 
set up coffee. Shout out to my wife for all the cool uh, stuff that she makes. Going with that notion of normalizing experiences, when you, as you were saying, like, you know, queer people, people with trauma, um, those other quote unquote groups that navigate life where they feel othered, creating a space where they feel they belong, they are centered, and they're in a place where they're now free to roam and explore their body and, and its optimal experiences. I think that that's, that's key. So that's the ethos of your space. Uh, reading uh, your comment here, Lindsay, um, definitely, I'm zooming out the door to teach, but love to talk on this more another time. Have a great day, thank you so much. Okay, so let me do this. I am going to screenshot all of your comments. And these are our talking points for when we book a time to chat. Thank you. Uh, anyone else want to share? Like, what is the ethos, ethos of your space? Alexandra, I what you were saying earlier about community. Carla. And Alexandra, if you are um, free and want to join me on screen, I'd love to have you on. And let's unpack this talk about community and what that means. What's going on, Andrew? Thanks for joining us. Yes, awesome. Hi, Crystal. Adrian, thanks for joining me. Custom Chorus joined me for an online class the other day too, so that was super fun. Um, I don't talk about that enough. I mean, as much as I'm, I spend a, a lot of my time uh, amping up the people in our room. I have online classes that I teach Tuesdays and Thursdays right now, scale them back, uh, but they're still running. So I would love for you to join me for our online Pilates class, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30. So that's a midday class. Message me and, uh, or the link is, is in my bio and we can get that going. So Duke, hello sir. <laughs> Thanks for the highly recommendation. Um, yeah, so that was. Uh, I appreciate you joining me, and I, I appreciate the recommendation. Go on uh, Google and give me a five star review. That'd be awesome. the The question that I'm asking. Oh, hey, hey. So I can. I, Audrey, you missed what I was saying earlier, but I was saying like in terms of the the ethos of our class. From a virtual perspective too, I try and translate that. So I was saying that for me, the ethos of what I'm doing is making sure people feel like they're glad that they showed up, that uh, they walk away feeling better, that they, they get a sense of hope about their journey, their fitness journey, and lastly, there's a sense of accomplishment on the day. So if those four things are happening in a space, and there's that, that's the ethos, of like this is what I'm coming to do, um, I think there's a win. So I don't know if that was experience for you in the virtual setting too. Try and translate that the best I can, but yes. Um, and to answer Crystal's question, am I having in-person sessions? Yes, I am. 
So as you can see behind me, this is my um, studio. And there's another reformer right here. And it's a shared space and it's a micro business. So we are inside high, high octane training and therapy. So it's a therapy clinic and uh, a gym, full service gym. And so this is this is my space. So this is like my broadcast studio slash studio, and I do partner training sessions and privates here. Eventually, going to incorporate a Joe's Gym semi-private format, much like uh, what I mean does in the UK. So that's coming slowly. But we like Canada was very very slow on reopening. Um, so everyone is kind of just getting their steam now. And still kind of squeamish about doing group classes so taking some time building that and I'll just building my my you know myself and my colleagues uh, business within here in a private setting semi private format is right now so that's where we're at uh, crystal where are you located and where's everyone else located too if you want to just put in a chat where you are in the world just out of curiosity and um, yeah and since it's a freestyle, if anyone wants to join me on screen, hit that request to join and jump on and we'll talk a little bit more about what is your ethos, like what is your vision for your space? I haven't said it that way, but real simple. What is a vision for your space, if you have a space? Or in terms of when you walk into a place, hi Francisco, when you walk into a place as a teacher or a private or a virtual, what do you want people to experience to be like truly, I'm, it's a spot when you feel like you're alive. You're not wasting your life doing these classes. You're actually having fun. The people are right. The, the vibe is right. All of that stuff is just all good. We get bad reception this morning. It's a little bit slow, freezing a bit on people. Yeah, so sorry, Crystal. Uh, where are you located? And Francisco, thanks for joining us. So, uh, and Crystal, where are you located? Are you saying like you're looking to try something new in your workouts? What do you do for your workouts right now? tried Pilates before, no? still in here too um, it'd be interesting to hear what you know about Pilates what you think of Pilates and how you de define Pilates because when people ask me you know what is Pilates I kind of massage the answer to meet them where they're at we we're talking about this the other day I could say oh so it'll it's for your posture help you feel better it's for your core help you feel better uh, it's gonna definitely help you with your vertical if you're an athlete or your speed or whatever it is 
It's a lot of core-based exercises that improve your, your joint mobility, your posture, you feel better, you know, you know all those different things. So um, you could throw your words together in so many ways around it, but just curious what you know about Pilates. Andrea, at the same time, do you teach out of, um, hey there, Blossom. Yeah, it definitely can. <laughs> Helps to lean out the body. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like, yeah, it definitely can do that, if that's your objective. I mean, there's so many layers to that, even in that, but yeah, you can see that. Uh, Blossom, while you're popping in, can you just write in the text if you have any classes or workshops coming up that you want people to know about? You're not hijacking my, my chat to do that. Or if you want to join me on screen and say hi, you can do so as well. Just like, just let us know what's going on and where, what, your, uh, what, what projects you're working on right now. Uh, so Crystal, yeah, message me. I'd love to do, I, I'd be more than happy to do an online class or if you're in the greater Toronto area, I can uh, use, hit the link and I can send you the booking apps right off of my website or I can message you di directly with that. I think you're in, I'm not sure if you're in a Toronto area or not, but. stuff so yeah so that's uh, that's where we're at with that um, tomorrow we have tomorrow we have um, Carissa Floyd back on and she was we had her actually last week we were talking about a little bit of this in terms of just the values that we bring and then we got into this pretty heated conversation about hypertrophy and Pilates and how we tie those things together which lend to conversations around accessibility and equipment and, and different styles and and how we communicate with our work. So it was a pretty in-depth conversation that continued for days afterwards. So I wanna bring her back on because we didn't even touch on like a lot of stuff still, um, which just made for a fun conversation. It'll probably be a totally different vibe tomorrow as well because like that's just how it is and you just kind of go where a conversation goes. So there'll be days when we run this right till 10 to 11 o'clock and days when we, we end it early. So. Adrian, thanks for sticking around. No feel, don't feel like you have to stick around. We're going to drop off right about now, uh, unless we have a barrage of people coming in, and then we're back at it tomorrow. It's all about that consistency, right? Oh, what a, wow, there is massive delay. Okay, so let me see your comment here. So I'm 100% virtual with description for what Pilates is, is need work. I usually describe it as a system of movement that helps with understanding moving your own body. Yeah, that's... That's definitely it. So then, that's cool. So I wonder what you say, like, you know, even as Crystal said there about like how it leans out the body. Actually, if you want to join me on screen, like you could jump on. I'd love to just asking questions now. Um, when someone says leans on your body, if someone comes to you for plies and says like, I just need to lose weight. Can I just use plies? I don't want to, I don't want to like put strain on my joints with like weightlifting. Can I just, can I just use plies to lose weight? That's my goal. Instead of doing a treadmill, I want to do Pilates to lose weight. I want to lean out my body. Can I do that?
you get out of it what you put in. Yeah, it's true. And that's a good way to put it because, like, you know, the reality is that what you put in really depends on what you put in outside of our hour together as well. Are you putting in proper sleep? Are you putting in better stress management? Are you putting in a solid work-life balance? Are you putting in the right fuel into your body? Are you putting in, you know what I mean? Like those sort of things. So there's a lot that goes into that. So yeah, well said. That's a pretty powerful thing. I think it's pretty cool that we can customize our answer because the work is so vast to what people need. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Good stuff. All right, cool. Uh, Adrian, well, thanks for sticking around with me. I'm going to jump off here, and uh, we're back at it tomorrow. Finish Strong Friday with We Are Plotty's House. So we have uh, Carissa Floyd coming on. And, um, yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.